What you're looking at now is the causeway at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station for the fifth attempt of the Falcon 9 to launch the SES-9 satellite. And still, even though there have been five scrubs, look at the media turn out to follow SpaceX and their endeavor. Now, as we, ever since Falcon, uh, the Falcon 9 landed on the uh, landing complex 13, or actually now they call it Launch Complex 1, an enormous groundswell of interest in SpaceX, and the turnout justifies that. We've had mechanical setbacks, range control, a couple different reasons why the launches were the scrubs. The last one were upper level winds. But it looks like all things are good to have that SpaceX launch. Now, if you turn around, Mike's going to get you a view of that rocket. It's a 229-foot Falcon 9 with 1.5 million pounds of thrust sitting on the pad and getting ready to launch. So we look forward to bringing you that coverage for Veteran Space Report and U.S. Launch Report. I'm Randy Coppola. Thanks for watching. See, verify Falcon 9 is in startup. Falcon 9 is in startup. The flicker computer has control of the vehicle. Minus 20. Stage one tanks pressing for flight. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Lift off. Minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Lift off.
the space. And recovery platform has AOS. AOS is acquisition of signal. That means the drone ship can see the telemetry coming from the Falcon 9. we're beginning to chill in the second stage engine to get it ready for ignition. Next major event coming up is main engine cutoff and stage separation. We have Miko 1. Okay. on the second stage. Yeah, turn it over. All right, uh, that's a successful second stage burn. We can hear the shears starting at that, that second stage burn. Um, the fairing separation is coming up shortly. The, the fairing, again, is that carbon fiber composite surrounding uh, an aluminum honeycomb that, that itself surrounds the satellite. Um, it protects the satellite. Uh, that's coming up in about 10 seconds. We're just waiting um, for it right here. We should have a good video of uh, the fairing separation. And there it goes. <laughs> Can you cheers here? Yeah, uh, it's, it's another major milestone. Um, the reason we get rid of the fairing, of course, is it's a, a lot of excess mass on the vehicle. So when you get rid of it, you can accelerate the rest of the second stage faster uh, and get the satellite that's on top of the second stage uh, all the way to that geostationary transfer orbit uh, without using quite as much fuel. So now while the second stage is accelerating, let's talk a little bit about where it's going right now. So we're going to a geostationary orbit. Now, as you guys probably know, going to orbit is not so much about going straight up, it is about going really, really fast and sideways. And so right now we're going to a geosynchronous orbit. Uh, this is a lot higher than a low Earth orbit where the International Space Station is, so it takes a lot more fuel to get there. And in fact, the uh, second stage has to make three separate orbital maneuvers or burn maneuvers in order to get up there. The first is this first burn you're seeing right now on your screen. Then there'll be about a 17 minute coast period and then a second burn, which lasts about 45 seconds. So uh, the main difference between low Earth orbit and geostationary, of course, is that distance. Um, the reason the geostationary in particular is where this satellite is going is because it's going to be staying in the same spot in the sky. That just makes communications with the satellites a little bit easier. Uh, in low Earth orbit, you end up making a ro rotation around the Earth in 90 minutes. Uh, the satellite, um, or excuse me, the International Space Station sees about 16 sunrises and sunsets because it's in that same orbital zone. Um, geostationary orbit is much further out and it's moving a little bit slower, but angularly it's moving at about the same speed, about the same speed as the Earth is rotating. And so it's actually pretty high up there. It's 36,000 kilometers up in the sky. So you can see this. We have an animation here showing exactly what the second stage is doing. You can see that first stage going back for landing, and then the first burn, which is happening right now. Then a 17-minute coast period, the fairing deploys. And then coming up uh, after the coast period, there's a second burn, really short, only 45 seconds or so. Then the payload separation, and then the satellite itself uh, takes a, a little while using its own thrusters to get the final 36,000 geostationary orbit, 36,000 kilometers. Uh, and here's an, an excellent demonstration. You can see that the satellite staying over that exact same point looks like America in, in, in that, that animation. Of course, this is going to end up over Southeast Asia, uh, but will stay over Southeast Asia for the entirety of its life as long as it uh, stays within that geostationary orbit. So like we were saying, uh, well, when, now when you're exactly in the same spot in the sky from the uh, perspective of someone on the ground, it's fantastic for communications equipment. If you have a satellite dish you want to point at the satellite in order to use it for communications, you just take your dish, point it directly yeah, in the sky, and it appears as a stationary, stationary star, and you can bounce all your communications right off of it. Uh, the same thing is happening with the drone video. Um, when it's got its sort of communications up to a satellite, uh, if the if the drone is sort of moving too much, as it tends to when you've got the a, vibration during launch tends to shake around the satellite on the drone ship quite a bit. Yeah, uh, and the vibration during the landing. Is it, you just heard. We just heard that the, uh, the first burn of the second stage. The first burn of the first stage. Is complete. That means the first stage is back on its way uh, to a, a hopefully successful landing soon. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs>
So we're, like I said, we're just waiting for the, uh, right now the second stage is still doing its first burn maneuver. This is a few minutes long. Um, coming up soon here, this first stage is going to be coming back down towards that drone ship. And as we discussed earlier in this webcast, this landing attempt is going to be quite the challenge. We're flying a GTO orbit, and as Tom and Michael just discussed, GTO missions a satellite in a much higher and much further orbit than our last two missions, each of which were to lower Earth orbit. Now, this different mission profile makes landing and recovering the first stage significantly more difficult for a few reasons. The first is speed. The first stage will be traveling at a much faster speed than the Orbcon mission, which, as you may remember, was our historic landing back in December. Orbcon, the first stage, was flying away from the pad at about 5,000 kilometers per hour. Before deploying the second stage of payload, and making a good turn back to the launch site. For Veteran Space Report and U.S. Launch Report, I'm Randy Coppola. Thanks for watching.